So, Father, we, uh, we come tonight just humble, humble in need of you, God. God, we continue to rely on you. And you are so good with your outstretched arm to us. God, I thank you that you are so for us, that you have made a covenant with us in your own blood. And I pray you would continue to bring us into your rest. God, I pray tonight for those that will be listening. Father, that you would just pour out your spirit in such a way that we would walk in a, a greater fear and, 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 and reverence for you, that, that we would not partake in any gossip or slander. And so, God, I just ask for, for a pouring out of the fear of the Lord upon us. That we, we wouldn't lay a hand on the Lord's anointed. Because every believer in Christ is anointed by you. And Lord, we also pray, God, that we would, uh, we would overlook matters. That you would be glorified. That we would walk as the glorious ones on the earth, shining as the children of light. And so, God, come and have your way tonight. We thank you for just... Uh, this study through the book of Proverbs, continue to make us wise, God, as we work out our salvation with fear and trembling. We need you, God. Come and have your way. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, amen, everybody. Hope uh, all is well. Um, we are in Proverbs chapter 17 today, Proverbs chapter 17, and... Um, the verse that jumped out to me tonight is in uh, Proverbs 17, verse 9. So if you have that, go ahead and turn there. Um, it says, Whoever covers an offense seeks love, but he who repeats a matter separates close friends. And so I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to talk about the back end first, and then we'll hit the front end towards the end, because I just want to end with positivity. All right? And so, uh, so the first the, the first part I want to talk about in Proverbs seventeen nine is he who repeats a matter separates close friends. Um, man, I see uh, a lot of gossip, a lot of slander that goes on in in the church, in organizations, uh, in the world. And sometimes we're really slick with our tongue. We don't we don't we don't think before we we speak and. Uh, understand that when we gossip or when we slander or, or when we say things that we shouldn't, it has the potential of separating close friends or it has the potential to hinder a potential close friendship. For example, if I talk about somebody in a bad way, there may be a great possibility that they receive my perspective and therefore won't move to them and move towards them in a way where they're approaching them with a clean slate. They're already defiled, if you will, or already skewed, if you will, because of the words of my mouth. And so this is a very, very dangerous thing. I want you to understand this over the years. Multiple times, multiple times, uh, I've done this, okay? And when, when we're walking in our flesh, when we're not walking in the Spirit, there's all kinds of things that can pop up. For instance, unforgiveness, bitterness, jelly, jealousy, uh, envies, and, and, and it and it can cause us to just speak that. And so, 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 listen. Uh, I've had multiple times where I've I've walked out of a meeting and says so it's just happened to me recently, right? And now I want to just say this: uh, this kind of never happens to people in my church. It's it usually happens with me with other organizations that I have issues with that I know are fleecing the flock. And so this is, uh, that's kind of what, what usually happens to me. And so um, I, I've had to, I've, I've said things, you know, to, to someone, then, then I go to my car and I felt like, oh, there's a conviction. I had to go back into the meeting and say, hey, brother, will you please forgive me? 
I just feel convicted. I shouldn't say this about this group. And so, you know what? Um, you know, please forgive me for doing that. I don't want to cause it, throw any shade or anything. So, so again, this, this can happen to anybody. It happens all, all the time. And, and one of the reasons is, is we don't, we don't have a fear and a, a reverence for the, for the Lord. And so James chapter three talks about it. It says, with our tongues, we praise men who have been created in the image and likeness of God, but then we curse, we curse those who have been made in the image and likeness of God as well. And so, man, who can save us from, from, from this, this tongue? And, and so, um, and so anyway, this is a, a really serious thing because it can cause somebody to be seen in a bad light. Now, here's the deal. Once it's out, it's out. And you can't take it back. Even though I ask for forgiveness, even though I say, hey, I was wrong for doing that. Once it's out, it's out. And who knows if somebody's going to take that and walk in immaturity or take that and go tell somebody else. So this is a very, very serious thing um, that the Bible warns us about. I want you to look at uh, Proverbs sixteen twenty eight. Proverbs sixteen twenty eight. This was from yesterday. But it says this, a dishonest man spreads strife and a whisperer separates close friends. And so it's the same kind of, of, of thinking, right? When, when, when we are spreading strife and, and, and we are whispering, we have the potential to ruin relationships. And it's a very serious matter to God. Now, here's what I've seen in the church, all right? So church, this is what I've seen. I've seen people come to me and say, hey, I need counsel. And then they begin to name drop. And then they begin to tell their side and their perspective, right? Um, I know this person, I, you know, I know so-and-so and, 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 and this is how, and I really need your counsel. Listen, if you're going to get counsel from somebody who knows that person, don't use their name. Because when you're telling them about that person and they know that person, all of a sudden you're giving your side of the story. There's two sides to every pancake. And so you're giving your perspective, which by the way, can very well be off. Specifically, if we've been offended, specifically if we've been hurt, we're going to tell our side. And now all of a sudden we're putting that person from our perspective in their view. And so I try to challenge our staff. I try to challenge uh, our employees that, hey, if you need counsel, you, you don't go to somebody that's on staff. You don't go to somebody that's in your church that knows that person. You go to another church. You go to another organization and, and you try to seek counsel or if you're going to name drop or... Don't use their name. And and listen, don't use their name in such a way if they can figure it out, right? If they can figure it out, you shouldn't be doing that because, man, we want to cover a multitude of sin. And sometimes seeking counsel turns into gossip, all right? And that's wrong. And we need to pray for a greater fear of the Lord concerning that. Also, how I see gossip happen in the church is, hey, uh, I need you to pray for so-and-so. They're really, and then we go into gossip, right? And so what's quote-unquote a prayer request is, again, it's throwing somebody under the bus when we really don't need to do that. You don't need to say the person's name because God knows their name, all right? God knows their name. And so, hey, I need you to pray for a person who's, who's really, really struggling with this, right? You don't need to throw them under the bus. It's a very, very serious thing. We want to guard somebody's reputation, honor them as best as we can. And then sometimes in the church, it is just straight up slander and gossip. And again, if you've been hurt, there's envy, there's jealousy. And listen, every single Christian has done this. But guys, we've got to stop. We've got to stop and we've got to ask God, please, God, I don't ever want to do this again. I don't ever want to lay hand on your anointed because every believer is anointed by God. First uh, John chapter two talks about that, that we have received. And so, and so I don't want to lay a hand on God's anointed. Give me that kind of fear. Give me that kind of reverence. Now, a quick story in the Bible, uh, Noah's sons. Um, Noah got drunk, right? He had a rough boat ride, okay? 40 days, planted a vineyard drank wine, drank too much, got naked. I don't know what happened, but here's what happened with his one son, Ham. He went in there and he exposed his father. He kind of, it seems like he was mocking his father. He told the other brothers, but see, the other brothers were no more noble than him. 
they went into the tent backwards, not even wanting to look at their father, and they covered his sin. Now, when dad got out of the tent and got over the hangover, um, he basically brought a curse down on Sam, but yet he blessed his other sons. And so this is a very, very serious thing. And so, man, what is your heart? Are you trying to uncover things? Are you trying to expose people? Again, uh, 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 Ham was cursed. And I don't want you to become cursed by God because of, of letting your tongue run. I, I want you to go ahead and turn to Proverbs 6.12 real quick because this is a uh, another serious passage that gives us a warning. And the reason why I'm going through this and spending time on this, because I'm praying that the Holy Spirit will just drench us in the fear of the Lord so that I would not say anything against a fellow brother or sister in Christ or someone else. And so Proverbs 6, 12, it says this. It says, a worthless person, a wicked man, goes about with crooked speech. That's pretty heavy. Winks with his eyes, signals with his feet, points with his finger, right? Isaiah 58 talks about true fasting. And, and one of the things God calls us to do is stop pointing the finger at people, right? And that is slander. That is gossip. That is look at this person. Look at what they're doing, right? And the Bible is saying, man, this person is a wicked person. That's how God views this, right? And, it, and for or, order for us to move away from sin, we've got to view sin like God views it. It's not just slander. It's not just talking about somebody. No, no, no. This is wickedness and this is sin. And not only that, we're going to see here in a minute, it's an abomination to the Lord. And so verse 14, with perverted heart devises evil, continually sowing discord. So sowing discord, sowing discord amongst the brethren, talking about and separating people and sowing discord. That is wickedness. And then verse 15, the warning, therefore calamity will come upon him suddenly. In a moment, he will be broken beyond healing. And then verse 16, God really takes it up a notch. There are six things the Lord hates, seven that are an abomination to him. Haughty eyes, and understand when you gossip about somebody in a wrong way, you're walking with haughty eyes or pride. A lying tongue. Be very, very careful what you say. Hands that shed innocent blood. That person doesn't know that you're gossiping about them and you are attacking someone who's in an, who's got their back to you. You're attacking, you're stabbing them in the back with a knife. That is innocent. That is innocent blood right there. A heart that devises wicked plans and feet that makes haste to run to run to evil. Gossip and slander. Some people just run to that. They can't, they can't, it's like a, uh, what, there's another passage in scripture that talks about gossip is like a tasty morsel, right? We, we can't, we can't wait to share what so-and-so did. And then 19, a false witness who breathes out lies. Again, what are you witnessing? What are you saying? And man, what if it's false? And then here's the final one, one who sows discord amongst the brethren saying something in such a way where it's going to cause separation of friends. It's sowing discord amongst the brethren. God calls that an abomination, and he says he hates it. And so, God, please give us a greater fear and reverence for your name so that we will not be people that gossip and slander with our tongue, that we would honor people, that we would be like Noah's sons who walked in backward to cover his father's sins. Now the first part Proverbs 17, 9, whoever covers an offense seeks love. It reminded me of 1 Peter 4, 8, which says this, above all, keep loving one another earnestly. So, so one of the ways you really, really love one another earnestly is that you cover a multitude of sin. That's 1 Peter 4, 8. Above all, keep one another, loving one another earnestly since love covers a multitude of sins. Also understand in Proverbs, not Proverbs, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, it says that love always protects. So if I'm really loving my brother or sister, if I'm really loving another person, I'm not gonna wanna slander. I'm gonna wanna protect their name. Uh, uh, Proverbs 22.1 says this, a good name is better than riches. And so I wanna be a person that is giving someone a good name. And so I wanna protect them. I wanna guard their honor. 
I, I want to cover a multitude of sins. And this is a way that we can, we can walk and love people earnestly. Uh, Proverbs 19.11 says this, Good sense makes one slow to anger, and it is his glory to overlook an offense. And so it is his glory. It is glorious, glorious for the sons and daughters of God to overlook an offense of someone. And I don't know about you, but that's where I want to be. That's the kind of person that I want to be before God. That, that, that I would be so loving and so care about my brother and sister in Christ that I'm going to cover their multitude of sin. I, I don't, I don't want to say anything to anybody. I don't want to uh, uh, tell anybody in order to separate friends. And I just want to cover their sin. I, I, I just want to be a protector of them. I want to love them earnestly. And man, we need to cry out for God to give us the, the, that kind of heart. When I was thinking about this and meditating on this, uh, I remember a situation that happened a long, long time ago uh, where I had a, an employee that, that, that worked with me. And he, he was in the office late at night and he was on... Uh, the internet, looking at things he didn't need to look at. And, and, and then to cover it up, he broke the computer to hide what he was doing. And I remember the next day getting a call and, and, and I could tell something was wrong. I, I need to meet with you. And, 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 and he met with me and, and he was crying and he was, he was weeping and he was just completely broken over what he did. He confessed it to me. He just, you could tell he'd been up all night just wrestling with God, so ashamed, so guilt, right? And, and, and listen, Jesus despised that shame on the cross. And I was able to speak to him. I was able to forgive him for the broken computer. I was able to cover the multitude of sin. I could have had him fired. There was grounds to do that. But you know what? I felt like the Holy Spirit wanted me to cover his sin. And, and I look back now, beautiful wife, kids, uh, amazing man of God. God brought him out of that. And, and that was a time where he needed to experience the grace of God and the, glo and, and, the, and the love of God and the fact that God doesn't condemn us when we are in Christ, that he wants to come alongside of us and work with us. And so, again, the main, the main verse for this evening um, that, that we've been on is, is this, Proverbs 17, 9, whoever covers an offense seeks love. But he who repeats a matter separates close friends. Um, uh, uh, guys, listen, I pray that God would burn this into us because we are called to be a different kind of people, a different kind of people. We are called, it is, it is glorious, glorious when we cover our brother and sister's sin. And so God, this is my prayer for us tonight. Let me close in prayer. Father, God, I just, uh, again, I thank you, God. I thank you for, for convicting me when I've disobeyed you and I've, I've been a part of slander. I've been a part of gossip, uh, judging other, other organizations, judging other ministries. God, this, this, this does not please you at all. You hate it. You, you, you call it an abomination when we point the, the finger when we sow seeds of discord amongst the brethren. And so, God, I pray for just a greater fear and reverence for those who are listening. Oh, God, that, that there would be such a reverence that they, that they would not lay a hand on the Lord's anointed. And every believer is anointed by the power of the Holy Spirit because they belong to you. And so give us a greater reverence for our brothers and sisters in Christ, a greater desire to love earnestly so that love covers a multitude of sins. Protect your people from causing division with their tongue. May we be people that honor one another in love, that believe the best about one another, that say, yes, that person's name, a good name is better than riches. And so I want to bring honor to their name. So God, please do this. Please have your way in your people. We thank you for your word. We thank you, God, for the power of the Holy Spirit that can come upon a heart that is, that is not right and forgive and cleanse and bring transformation, God. We thank you 
for your mighty hand. May it be upon us, God, for good, so that your name is glorified, Jesus, and that the world will see the sons and daughters of the Most High God bringing this glorious kingdom because we live in its reality. Have your way tonight, Jesus, and your people. We thank you for this time. In Christ's name, amen. Amen, guys. Blessings on you. Um, hope you have a great evening, and I pray that, uh, that God will just continue to minister his word um, into your life. All right? Have a great night. God bless. I'll see you tomorrow, same time, 9 p.m., and uh, we'll be in Proverbs chapter 18 to see, we'll see what God uh, uh, does tomorrow. All right? Have a good night.